Okay, folks. So with lack of energy and lack of enthusiasm, we are recording our review for Impact on Access TV as we are on the last week, last episode before Slammiversary, which is this Saturday, July 15th. Now that you can tell, I have no energy because it's not because of the lack of eating or anything. It's because this episode did nothing for me to create the hype going into Saturday. As much as I'm still excited about it, this episode did nothing. But anyway, if it's the first time you ever watched this review, I'm not Jared, and I'm alongside of Miss Miranda Morales. Hello. And unfortunately, we are tasked here to talk about tonight's episode because uh, that's what we've been doing the last couple of weeks or months yeah. or something. So, but we'll 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 draw some good out of it. As 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 like I said, if you've never seen it before, we don't break down the entire car. We just like to talk about the things that are definitely worth talking about. Um, and our big bright moments of the night, and even my man Swing Man didn't even give me a lot this week. Oh, I mean, course I'm a little head, disappointed though. on that too. I know, I know, I know, but I'm gonna ramp up the energy a little bit. And okay. before we get started, we have to go all the way to the very end of the episode and talk about, as we like to call our MCU after the credit scene. And what happened tonight is that it looks like somebody uh expedited a package up into the impact officials. Oh uh, man, uh, since like we got some uh, uh, Scott Demore, looks like he says Impact is uh, excuse me, Sun Verse is going to be a uh, much more exciting now. I didn't know what to make of this. Is there something I missed that you picked up on? Because I, I don't know. No, it's a, it's a good point. Um, not a lot of teasers as to who this may be. I think the big story from this is it looks like a contract was signed. So uh, someone folded up some paper that said Impact Wrestling on it, sent it over to Impact offices. Uh, Scott Moore got it. And it sounds like maybe someone isn't just there for a one-off, that they could be there for the long run. Um, that's really all that I got from it. No other big indicator as to who it is. Uh, they did a pretty good job of disguising it, but, uh, I know that there's been a lot of speculation that it could be a one-off that someone could just make an appearance, but with this new scene, it looks like there's someone who is going to, uh, make a, a long run, uh, journey, uh, out of their time at impact. Yeah, I, I get with that. And I, yeah, I guess that's, that's. That's literally all I think. That yeah. Makes sense that. That's so, all I got. That's yeah. all we got. Sorry. Yeah. yeah. Um, I'm cool with that. We'll have to see what happens on Saturday with that. Um, I think we can kind of talk about the idea that a lot of people have been speculating that maybe Rusev was going to be or become some type of factor this Saturday at Slammiversary. But Rusev have recently came out on social media saying that he has COVID-19. Uh, he's doing well. He's recovering. But yeah. based on our knowledge of, you know, of, of, of this uh, uh, virus that you, there's a quarantine period, yeah. it the, the dates don't add up unless he just, I don't know, Ben had it. But then that also puts a wrench in everything Lana been saying, his wife, with her family. So is it, I guess it's safe to say that we will not be seeing Rusev this Saturday as much as as excited as that had it been. Um, I'm more, I'm definitely more excited about the recovery of his health more than seeing him wrestle. But, um, as far as implications and impact, I don't think we're getting any of that this Saturday. Yeah, you're right. It, it does sound like he is still in a period of recovery from COVID-19. Um, so I, I agree. Any shot of us witnessing him at Slammiversary is now gone, but it could lead to some interesting developments if they somehow clue us in that he is now part of the Impact roster and we see him on a future episode of Impact. I mean, that would be huge to see him uh, on a Tuesday night. So if there's yeah. a way they could tease us to let us know that he is a part of the roster and still leave that mystery up as to when we're going to see him next, that's a very welcome surprise yeah i agree but anyway so <clears throat> this night um we'll, we'll, we'll talk a little bit about the matches but nonetheless this night was just for me it felt like they were just filling time uh we've seen reused promos and vignettes uh we've seen a lot of uh, uh and a lot of those promos and vignettes pretty much as an indication as to how all of the matches for this saturday 
came about. So if you've missed everything in the last month and a half, then this was your episode because it got you all the way caught up in every storyline yeah. to literally get you to the point of saying, okay, now I'm investing in staff. That's the route that they got to take, and that's fine. Uh, but for the people that's been watching this entire time, this episode really didn't do anything because we got nothing new. We got nothing that etches anything into concrete for the Saturday or nonetheless, just more excitement for this Saturday. Nonetheless, this episode just felt like a filler. And as we know, in all anime, fillers suck. Uh, but nonetheless, it is what it is. But I will say, uh, again, for the positivity, the 10 woman tag match yes. that started off this show was like that. Um, I liked it for a lot of reasons. One, traditionally, you just don't see heels and faces on the same team uh, or a combination of them on the same team versus the other teams. Usually all the faces on one side, all the heels on one side. So I did like how that was different. But nonetheless, we just really got to see a display. Well, I'll just say uh, 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 a pre-show display of what's to come on Saturday because the knockouts division has been talking about has been one of the best knockouts division maybe of all time. Uh, and, and one will argue the best women's roster currently in professional wrestling kind of seeing everybody all together at once. It gets surreal when you look around that ring at the talent, some of the people with uh, the, the tulich in professional wrestling, their gimmicks, everything all in one space it was really phenomenal to see and, and not to mention just some of the spots and everybody, some of the people being able to rub with each other that they haven't been able to yet. It, it was, it was dope. I, I loved everything about it. And it's just that I think was really, uh, was also still solidifies the most exciting match for me coming into this Saturday. Uh, and that's going to be that woman's gauntlet match. I can't wait to see how that comes about. This was the match of the night for me. Uh, it was a very strong start to the show. And I think that's why the rest of the show felt a little underwhelming because you had such a great start with this 10 women match, five on five. Absolutely right with uh, heels and faces on the same teams. You're playing a lot on dynamics that we've seen over the past few weeks, like Neve and Havoc. Uh, uh, versus uh, Kiera and Tasha Steeles, uh, Kylie and Susie versus Taya and Rosemary. So you're building on storylines that we've seen over the past few weeks into this big match. Uh, a lot of high flying, a, a very awesome move set. Susie surprisingly getting the win. And something for me that I really enjoyed was getting a little bit of that tinge of, of, uh, of, um, yeah. So um, that was something I've been personally wanting for weeks, and we saw it for the first time tonight, which gets me absolutely excited about the, t you know, which Susie, which Su Young, who are we going to see during the gauntlet match um, at, at Slammiversary? So this was really well done. For me, the best match of the night. Yep, can't argue that one. I will also say that um, Madison Rain. Obviously, this. I mean, I, I mean, we're not sure, but if this is her last night on commentary, she nailed it. <laughs> she said, I mean, she spoke to me in so many different ways, but the fact of the matter, she's like, yeah, that's pretty cool. Everybody's in the ring and all, but uh, while they're all busting each other up, I'm just over here chilling and I'll be in uh, fresh shape going into the mat. So, like, yeah, yeah, that absolutely makes sense. Absolutely you know? right. Yeah, she's absolutely right on that. And that was, again, I think her her strong suit is commentary, especially during the knockouts match, and one in which she's commentating on a match that she's going to be on uh, at Slammiversary in that dynamic was really, really funny. Uh, and, and yeah, she, she nailed a lot of things tonight on commentary. And, and Josh Matthews did a really terrific job, too. A lot of funny things that mm. they play, play off each other so well. Yep, I, I agree there. Uh, any predictions on who wins that comment match on Saturday? <laughs> Oh man, it's hard to to tell. I I really love this dynamic between Taya and Kylie Ray. Those are my top two picks. I feel like uh, we either get this this uh, veteran, longest reigning knockouts champion Taya coming out again. Uh, we may see you know either a repeat of her and Jordan, or I mean possibly her and Diana could be a fantastic match. But Kylie Ray is the top face at impact right now and so i feel like she would just be, be phenomenal as number one contender mm. i don't know i think uh i think my dark horse might be madison rain here mm -hmm. i think that 
maybe she may be trending towards per permanently transitioning to commentary. So why not give her one more last hurrah in the uh, spotlight? And she's done so much for this division. Uh, you know, it would it it would be solidifying for her to be able to get um, a chance in this new regime and in, in, in women's wrestling and on Impact Wrestling. So I think that I think that would definitely be dope. But if it's not her, I think it might be Kimberly here because I've been noticing like a lot of her just losing and just under the shadows. And I mean, she's she works face easily, but her work in heel, and I always think a heel champion is the way to go. Um, and Jordan's clearly face. And I don't think they pulled the trigger on Deanna right away. But then you have Deanna and so many good faces that she can uh, work with. There's a lot that you can do, but I, yeah, just just simply, I'm thinking if it, if it's if it's not massive rain, then I'm going to go with uh, I'm going to go with Kimberly. So we'll see. It's going to be my match. It's definitely going to be my the most match I'm looking forward to this Saturday. So we'll see how that comes about. Uh, okay. So Nets moving towards Madman Fulton and Ace Austin as they seem to uh, go back to Ohio. <laughs> yeah, they're in Ohio. <laughs> yeah. For what? I don't know, but um, yeah, you can see in this video here. What is it? What? Man, then you told me when I left OBE, we would never have to come back to this dump. Yeah, here we are again. Why did you come with me on this journey? Because you wanted to be more than OVE. You wanted to be your own man. You gotta trust the process, okay? At Slammiversary, the odds are definitely in our favor, I would say. Would you not? Yeah. Yes. But if there's one thing I've learned in my five years in the wrestling industry, it's that sometimes you gotta go back where it started, back to the roots, okay? Sometimes you gotta train in the dirt to get where you wanna go. Don't you miss the old gym? No. Listen, this will be worth it. Trust me. Impact Wrestling, tonight, 8, 7 Central on Axis TV. So, I, I, I think what's I think what's beneficiary from this video is that we get to see Madman Fulton and Ace Austin being relatable to each other. So they wasn't just a tag team that you just threw out together or, or a stable that you put up together and say work a monster and his and, and his protege, whatever it may be. Uh, but I, I do like the fact of them humanizing them for a moment um, as they legitimately got a strategy going into uh, this Saturday. So although it, it doesn't give you a lot and obviously you know the last cinematic wrestling moment of the night as it leads to that i think more importantly we just we kind of see that madman and ace isn't the same dynamic as uh madman and um sammy callahan but this actually does feel more like a partnership uh as ace has been promoting so uh, but yeah, Ohio, as Mad Man says, I thought you never bring me back to this, but yep, there they go. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I would say bookend to bookend the show, these two bookends with the women's match and then this uh, kind of cinematic piece with Ace Austin and Trey Miguel, Madman Fulton. Um, I mean, I, I think it was a really great way to build anticipation to uh, the the championship match uh, for this Saturday at Slammiversary. It really does continue to dig deep at the rivalry between Ace Miguel or Ace and, and Trey Miguel. So I mean, uh, that is a story that I mean, it's taking it to the next level now. And now seeing Madman Fulton in a different dynamic, uh, it I absolutely agree. You're seeing him in a way that's very different, but still very powerful. Um, and one that is, is treating him differently than, than Sammy did and acknowledging sometimes you got to go into your past and acknowledge it in order to move uh 
forward. So uh, I really liked this last cinematic piece. Uh, lots of chaos, lots of hard hitting action. Uh, I thought it was a, a really fun way to end. And yeah, I was going through this episode a, a little underwhelmed, but I feel like this ended up saving uh, the episode. Yeah, you nailed it too. Cause I was I was mentioning when I seen some of the graphics for uh the episode uh earlier released on their Twitter page, it was like Ace Austin returns to his roots. I was like, so that guy's from uh Jersey. So what do you mean going back to his roots when they're going to Ohio? Nonetheless, this is wrestling training roots and just his fundamentals. So, you know, as much as the guy plays one of the best heels in wrestling, he's absolutely just a really, really good professional wrestler, um, in and out. And he 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 works his gimmick, but nonetheless, uh, you know, regardless of how you look at it, this match is big for him in his career. Him becoming potentially becoming the youngest uh, Impact World Champion, it's a big deal. So I really do like again how they really got to humanize him and Matt Man, and, sh- and nonetheless showing them cohesive cohesive as a partnership. So we'll see. But if you have to give a prediction of who wins that match, who do you got? <gasps> Oh, man, it's a, it's a hard one uh, because you have this unknown factor of a fourth person, and that's truly the wild card in all of this. You have no idea who this fourth person will be and what their impact, pun intended, is going to be on this match. But my gut is really telling me the way that they're pushing Ace Austin with the partnership with Madman Fulton, uh, the promos and the vignettes, everything that they've done to elevate him over the past few months, it's hard to bet against Ace Austin. It, you know, it would be something that's really newsworthy for the company. It's a way to bring up a, a maybe kind of unknown talent, but they could really launch him into the stratosphere. Uh, I feel like uh, it's, it's his to lose. Yeah. Yep. So flashback moment of the week. At first I was like, okay, it's a full match. Uh, it was a triple threat for the X division championship with, uh, why am I drawing a blank? Uh, we had Kenny King, Suicide and Chris Saban. Kenny King was the champion That's at the right. time. And it was, was an ultimate X, uh, X division championship, which means that the X division ch- title was uh, suspended above the ring um, with the, the two, with the X uh, mark. And, yeah. and those were, are always very fun matches to watch. Uh, yeah. I, I, I really do enjoy them. And it really was a, a highlight of TNA. One of the things that made them so innovative and unique with, the X division um, ultimate X is just one that I think uh, lots of fans will watch, especially this week's match pretty fondly. Yeah. Okay. So what to make of this moment, the flashback moment this week, I mean, who knows? So we know suicide is already on, on the roster. Something that I think uh, to me, what the poignant uh, aspect of this was Chris Sabin winning the X Division Championship, making his return. Uh, we also saw some clips of him during the uh, um, promo in which uh, they've been airing every week, where we've seen kind of these clips of previous Impact and and some not previous Impact stars. Chris Sabin was also featured on there, so my my gut is telling me this has something to do with Chris Sabin. He's 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 coming back in some way, shape, or form. We're going to see him. Maybe he's the fourth man. Who knows? Uh, I mean, he was a, a former TNA world champion. So maybe he is the the former world champion that, that's coming to Slammiversary. Oh, uh, okay. Maybe they bring back the, X, the uh, Ultimate X match for the Chris Bay and uh, Willie Mack. Ooh, that is something that I don't think anybody would would have guessed. Uh, but that would just take this to another level with Chris Bay <laughs> and Willie Mack if they had to not only have an X Division Championship match, but it'd be an Ultimate X match. Yeah. So Johnny Swinger. Johnny Swinger. So because my heart, my heart goes out to Johnny Swinger this week. I, know, and the, I don't say that ever. I don't say that ever. Yep. I don't even think I can speak on it. I'm just saying like, this is, this is ludicrous. This is absolutely ludicrous. So he gets a chance to be at ringside and then he ends up. And, oh, then Chris Bay has other plans. I don't want to talk about it. It's not fair. Uh, 
poor, uh, poor, poor swinger. You know, I, I'm actually surprised at how heartfelt he he felt. Very connected to Chris Bay. He thought they had a partnership. Chris Bay had other things in mind, which we kind of already knew. I mean, again, Chris Bay is is very smart. Uh, he he hasn't been an impact very long. What maybe seven months? Uh, and he you, he knows that in order to get anywhere in this company, you have to make strong partnerships, and you have to you know. Uh, leverage your uh, partnerships in ways that that can be beneficial. And he has with Johnny Swinger. Unfortunately, I think Johnny Swinger thought he had a true friend in Chris Bay. And uh, I guess not. But, you know, swing man, he's going to keep on swinging. I have no doubt that the swing man has other things lined up. I'm still his friend. That's all that matters. I think. Yeah, I that's am. true. I miss. No, friend, you sure. are. You are. Yeah, he knows that. <laughs> swing man knows that. Number one yeah. fan right there. That's right. That's right, Daddy. All right. So the contract signing be be between Deanna Prazo and Jordan Grace, hosted by Jimmy Jacobs, Jimmy seen Jacobs. at in the back of the locker room, never before has a contract signing been at at the lunch table. At least as it hasn't felt the me. But uh, what? <laughs> I know. Uh, this was just one of the aspects of the episode that just – uh, was underwhelming for me. I get it that you may want to do a contract signing in a different way, but you want to always take it to the next level, not a step below. So if you're not doing an in-ring contract signing, like take it a step above, you know, I don't know what that looks like, but a step above what it would be in ring, like an actual conference room or something, not cafeteria. So that's a step below. So that yeah. that's a mark on impact this week. Sorry. You know, that's just, yeah. that's just facts. I literally have nothing else to add to that, but like, come on guys. Like really? Any uh, any other better aesthetics would have made it just a little bit better. This is a huge match, yeah. nonetheless. Jordan Grace is must-watch TV. Deanna Perrazzo's must-watch TV. If you want to buy people into this match, then make it look like a thing. Yes. It, the graphics look better than this live segment, to be honest. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, no. Get, at least get them some nice chairs. Like a nice, like little things that they could have done to elevate this contract signing. Y'all used a clipboard, not even like a fancy pad folio. You know, those little details uh, that, that fans can witness that that make them feel like maybe this match isn't uh, as as important. But both women, though, did a fantastic job selling their point of view, their perspective, their competitive edge. And that, I think, is still going to be the, the highlight and the selling point for this match. They are both incredibly intensive and uh, aggressive fighters, uh, both very different styles. And we saw Jordan Grace kind of get the, the upper hand this week. She was tired of Deanna Perrazzo running her mouth. And uh, Jordan uh, Grace just showed her what she could do with her fists. And sometimes yeah. that's all you can do. Just show what you can do with your fists. Yeah. All right. If you are literally a betting person, I can tell you the safest bet in all the Impact Wrestling is betting that at any time, the mystery partner is always Rohit Raju. Never <laughs> fails. Never fails. Never fails. Because even oh. when Johnny Swinger needed one, there you go. And when Moose need a mystery partner, none less behold, Roy Raju. So that was a thing. And this match with them two versus Tommy Dreamer and uh, Crazy Steve was a thing that I guess needed to happen. Uh, what? What? I wouldn't say needed. I'm I'm with you there. I don't think a any of this of, needed to happen. A lot of sarcasm on needed. I'm Madison yeah. Rain going on. <laughs> He's like, Madison Rain to like, my Josh Matthews. Is that like she said? There's no reason for Boost to be in this match right now. No one needs a <laughs> warm up. For his Lord, man, man, man. Did mm, yeah, that happen? That happened. <laughs> Go ahead. You can. I know yeah, you know, I really enjoyed Tommy Dreamer's promo last week, and I would have been perfectly happy if that's the final setup that we had for this match. Uh, they did not need this tag match. Uh, Crazy Steve and Tommy Dreamer did get the win, uh, but again, I don't know what how this all you know intertwines together. Other than you know, it means that he's going to lose at Slammiversary, you know. But I didn't need a match tonight to tell me that either. Yeah. So. <laughs> Uh, 
I feel like you could have completely removed this match and we could have left at just the promo work that Tommy Dreamer did last week and I would have been perfectly satisfied. Amen to that. Agreed. Yeah. Um, Hernandez and Rhino on wrestling competition video. Perfect. Then a street fight for some apparent reason. I guess. The resolve. Also, I guess. Also, why right now was this a thing? As you're leading up into your biggest pay-per-view and you got this big filler of a nothingness right now. I enjoyed it, but like... Yeah, I mean, it, it was entertaining. They talked about uh, some of the clips that they put on social media of them arm wrestling all over the place. It was fairly comedic. Uh, this uh, backlot bra type of match that they had came kind of unexpected other than the fact that usually you have a few weeks to build up to that, but they went straight into it. Uh, again, probably filling some time in. I mean, probably, had, probably. <laughs> But, you, you know, I know that you're going to hate where I'm going to go with this. However, the fact that they made some common ground at the end of this match probably means that they're going to tag team, uh, become a tag team. I know you hate this, but you know that's where they're going into. Like, what, what other explanation did all of this have other than the fact that they're going to be a tag team Yeah, fairly soon? Demers and Triple SL had a match. Do you guys go? I mentioned it. Um, next, uh, I, I will say that I also, also forgot that Giant Swinger brought up cancel culture tonight. Said he consulted with them. <laughs> Maybe he knows something I don't know, but uh, who? <laughs> oh, yeah. I was that, that was a whole. I mean, unless you talking about. forgot to edit that? Did they, uh, did they unless that's like the legitimate co- cancel culture, or it could have been reused footage. Who knows? Because at this point, right now, this episode was a lot of filler. So who knows? I don't know. Last thing I guess to talk about again is just to come back full circle with the last point of the of the, of the um, episode was Ace Austin and Madman Fulton going back into the gym in Ohio, uh, training, uh, getting some bumps in, tussling around, getting to know each other, and so on. A little bit of messages to each other, a little bit of heel work on Ace Austin with uh, the, the training ring, blah, 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 blah. And that's a no tray. Uh, finds out on social media that they're at their gym. So they roll up on them. He pulled up on them and they had a Senate mad at wrestling match. So it was great. I thought it was really well done. As you, as you already mentioned, I will just lastly mention that cinematic wrestling is the future. And I love it being able to do on a smaller scale on a weekly mm-hmm. episode and then hopefully on a bigger scale at a pay-per-view. So, um, and I, I love the uniqueness of it. I love how it was relatable meaning that like it's something you can literally foresee happening and it it comes off really authentic in a wrestling way. A practical is the word I guess I should use. Uh, But yeah, it it, it was cool. So, uh, you know, nonetheless, they, we got through this episode and they, they, as much as we got through this episode, so did they, cause it seemed like they were trying to pull from the heavens to try to make some of this work. Uh, Yeah. yeah, Even, even duct tape probably wouldn't have fixed some of these fillers that was happening, but it was a journey. Yeah, it was it was a journey. I don't know what kind of journey. I do feel like there was some really good solid spots. Over, but from what they've been doing over the past few weeks to now, uh, it, I was very surprised. I was very surprised that I was a little underwhelmed uh, at this particular stage because they had been doing such a fantastic job of building up storylines um, and putting together stories with all of the things that have happened, vacating your world championship, people leaving the company, uh, changes with your with your roster. Uh, that means, you know, changes in storyline. I mean, they've done a fantastic job with adapting to, you know, the events over the past month and to kind of get to this point so close to the biggest event of the year and then kind of fall flat. You know, it's a little, you know, disheartening. Yeah, this was the last 400 meters left in the race. And you bet your ass they should have been sprinting through it. And somebody pulled the hamstring and it they, they, they limped through it. Nonetheless, you noted all the reasons as to what they had to go through to get to this point. And by all means, that's all to them for that. Uh, not to mention whatever plans they might have for anniversary, how much of that changes. Because they're not like other promotions where like every little change is dictated online. Where, you know, maybe there was plans to have fans maybe there was plans for certain people to be able to uh be signed and ready to go maybe some people wanted to sign and then change their mind so who knows what's happening behind the scenes you know people like ec3 is lobbying everywhere right now 
you know, Leo Rush has an interesting uh, little foreshadowing on his end. So who knows? But and nonetheless, I think it takes nothing away from me watching Slamversary this Saturday with this, as much excitement as they've been building yeah. all the way since Rebellion. They've been really doing a really good job. I just would have liked this last little stretch to just been full blown burnout, you know, get to that point and do the thing. But, uh, you know, we're covering it. We'll, we'll, we'll definitely be covering it. Uh, makes me think maybe we record that Sunday or something. Ooh. Yeah. We'll figure it out. Um, you know, yeah. we're, we're old. I mean, I'm old. Excuse me. She's like 21. I think that's uh, not, that's a beautiful life. That, that's an internet rumor. We need to like get moving. Let's get this internet rumor along out. But well, we're not going to record it that night. We're not going to record it. <laughs> no, 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 no. You know, give some time to to let mm-hmm. things sink in, to get our collect our thoughts, and then yeah. you know, we'll get yeah. back to everyone on our thoughts of, of Slam Anniversary. Yeah. Anybody that's listening to this so far or, or to this point, definitely let me know in the comments what you're most excited for uh, coming this Saturday. Uh, do you see what, what champions do you see? changing hands what people do you have returning what rumors do you maybe know about that we ain't talking mm-hmm. about and overall we're most excited for because we are definitely looking forward to it we can't wait to cover it i can't say it enough but back in the normal world we would definitely be there in person yes but here okay. we are virtually still very much excited still ready to cover it still ready to give you guys uh, a very better uplifting and positive review because i know we're gonna have a ton of good stuff to talk about then yes um but we have to wait and see. Saturday, July 15th, Fight TV. Uh, definitely, I'll, if if you haven't already purchased it, definitely get it. You definitely want to watch it live. It's not it's not going to be a show to miss. It's a, it's a lot of good reasons as to watch. And hopefully from all our previous episodes, you still get that same feeling, regardless of my lackluster energy of tonight's episode. But again, if you this your first ep- if this your first review, if this your first review watching, this is your first episode watching, I think this episode did everything you need to know why you, what are you watching coming Saturday? So yeah, yeah it's a little bit of something for everybody. So there you go. Anything else you want to ask when we roll up out of here? No, I, I am still excited to uh, watch this Saturday, uh, July 18th slam anniversary. You know, I'll be glued to my computer. That's how I'm going to be watching it. And so I, I hope everyone else does. But yeah, let us know your thoughts on what are you excited about? Uh, what do you think of this week's episode? All that good stuff. Let us know in the comments. And also, who do you think put that piece of mail in the FedEx? And then you UPS because it always gets lost. Oh, FedEx is trash too. Never mind. But yeah, who do you think put that contract in FedEx? I don't know. Oh, I don't know. Oh my gosh, I don't know. There's too many people. There's way too many people. Um, um, oh my gosh, I have to pick someone. Um, uh, Chris Saban. That's that's my answer for this. <laughs> yes. Easy. Yeah, I know, easy, but I wouldn't if you would have asked me a week ago, that name would have not come up for me. So you know what? It's it's technically a new answer. Yeah. Eric Young, see you, see you Saturday, buddy. We know it was you. Or Super Eric. Who knew yeah. Eric we're going to get? Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, well, that's it for the weekend. Uh, thank you for watching. Uh, be sure to check us out. We'll be back for Impact Review. I'm guessing Sunday we'll work it out. You know, you, you'll you find out. We're writing the comments or something else. Yeah. But yeah, nonetheless, uh, our review for some version, tentatively Sunday, our review for A- Impact on Access TV. We'll see you back next Tuesday. But until then, everybody stay safe. Wear no mask. Catch yep. you then.